right, so a lot of folks ask us how we heat our greenhouse, and I thought that that was kind of a timely question this week, because we've spent the last weekend putting in our wood-burning furnace, okay? So this is, a, this is a wood-burning furnace, and we sized it, so we picked out the furnace that was the right size for the amount of heat we needed to be putting into our greenhouse. So greenhouse, uh, figuring out how much heat you need in your greenhouse is a fairly simple task. You just got to do the calculations. And if you're a little bit intimidated by that, there's a ton of greenhouse heat calculators online. Just Google greenhouse heat calculators. Almost all the big greenhouse companies have them because they're, of course, trying to sell you film, trying to sell you all these other things for heating your greenhouse. So um, our calculation showed us that we need to deliver a 243,000 BTU uh, per hour during the coldest part of our winter to maintain our temperatures at 70. So we sized this heater to deliver a quarter of a million BTUs for on an eight hour burn. So um, this is just kind of a standard wood burning sto uh, stove. It's kind of expensive, but um, you know, it's, it's well worth the cost for us because wood is, is practically free. Um, you can see we haven't gotten every, we haven't even burned yet in it, but we'll uh, probably finish wiring everything up today and, and do our first burn tonight. So um, that's, this is the outside part. So there's a water jacket around this and the, the fire burns in here and the water heats up and then we pump the water um, from the stove here into the fish house. And I don't have uh, my fish loop installed yet, but when the time comes, probably this afternoon, I'll get a, a loop installed through all my fish tanks so it's, on a, it's just on a thermostat and it heats up my fish tanks um, as they cool down. So we'll go inside real quick and I'll show you my heaters inside. The water from the stove is circulated via a pump. It's, we send it underground through a big insulated, um, like, uh, big insulated tube basically. Comes into the fish house, runs on the fish loop, comes out here. And you can see this is, uh, this is where our water comes in right here. And it runs up, and it runs up to our heat exchangers up here. Runs through those, and then it comes back and gets sent back out to the stove to Here's be reheated. Our, um, heat exchanger, you can see uh, where the water goes in right here and comes out the top. We've got a couple more things we need to plumb onto this, by the way. This isn't entirely finished. Uh, hopefully we get it all done today. But the water basically goes through, and this is just basically a radiator, okay? And it's got a big blower behind it back here uh, that you can't see very well, but it's just kind of a big squirrel cage blower. And that thing just spins and blows air through here, and as it moves through here, all the heat coming in on the pipe gets transferred to our air and just kind of blows out across the greenhouse. So once, uh, once we get this rigged up and get this going, in the next week or two, I'm actually going to put um, basically a... a piece of metal on the front of this that feeds into a poly tube and it's just a long tube of polyethylene that runs down the greenhouse and instead of this just blowing out hot air and just kind of making this hot area right in here it's going to send it the whole way down the greenhouse and that tube has little holes in the side it's going to blow out the size of it and kind of make this circular um, air pattern so instead of just warming this and just kind of uh, leaving all of our hot air at the top of the greenhouse it will blow down the sides and circulate that warm air really nicely so there are a lot of other ways that you can heat your greenhouse um, too it, you don't just need to be doing hot water or, or gas or whatever um, you know there's there's uh, lots of options out there whether you're a small uh, producer with a really small greenhouse putting in electric might be feasible so like a little electric modine it's just got an electric element in there and a blower on it works in a very similar way it is cheaper to set up but it's more costly to run okay gas is kind of an intermediate it's it's kind of uh, intermediate cost setting it up and kind of moderate uh, cost running it um, then of course our system would uh, you can't go wrong with it where we're at we've got lots of dead standing uh, beetle kill timber so we can burn a lot of that wood and it's free so the costs up front are much higher but the operating costs in the long run are much lower. So those are all things that you just want to think about really long and hard when you're thinking about how you want to heat your greenhouse. Uh, do you want to spend more money up front and less money operating it? How long is your winter? How many BTUs do you need to deliver on an hourly basis? All of these things, once you've got them down on paper, uh, you can start to make some really good decisions when it comes to budgeting to heat a greenhouse. 
really will just depend on the amount of plants you want to grow. In our system here, we're running 4,000 gallons of water, and that's running, uh, that will be running about 550 towers uh, when it's all said and done. Or essentially, you know, 5,000 some plants will be running off of 4,000 gallons.